All right, Tim, we're going to get to the uh, news at hand, and this is one of the downfalls of the transfer portal in regards to being a fan of a college football team. I'm not going to compare this to what we witnessed with the Alabama-Iowa trading of Caden Proctor because this is not that. Of course, Bear Alexander did put in his time at USC, but there was so much elation just a year ago about getting one of the better defensive tackles in all of college football, him turning in a solid season. And then it appears as though he's going to be choosing to play somewhere else for a third consecutive year. Well, um, yeah. The, so the rumors and speculation are is that he met with Lincoln Riley to discuss, I believe, going into the transfer portal. This is just again hearsay. Um, and, and remember, people, this is this is entering the transfer portal. I'm not saying usually when a high profile athlete enters the transfer portal, they're most not likely not coming back. There are Rare cases of guys going into the portal, coming back. Uh, I, I'm not sure if this is going to be that kind of situation. I don't even know, again, if he actually enters the portal. I do know that you have um, – it's weird timing for me. I just the, – the timing of this thing is just a bit strange because uh, the the spring transfer portal does not open up until the 16th of April. And now, obviously, we know a lot of stuff moves behind the scenes, you know, get things going, rumor, speculation, people start talking – so there, there could be a, a lot of truth going to this thing. But the first thing one is one, uh, let's wait till something actually happens. Then let's assume, let's let's play that game. Let's assume that he, that he does go. You still have Coach Henny. We've been we've been all excited about Coach Henderson. You know, talk about his recruiting skills and his relationship building. This is what we've been talking about with this coach. You know, he is a premier defensive line coach, and so I don't know. And no, neither does anybody. No one knows why, if he were to enter the portal, what his purpose, uh, what his reasonings would be. I don't think it's anyone's right really to speculate this early as well on why he's entering the portal. Um, it's definitely is. Why don't we wait until she, uh, he actually enters the portal? But let's just play that game. Uh, I, I don't I don't want to guess what it is, but I tell you what, it can't be coaching because talk about a great opportunity for him. He's he's going to be going into the NFL draft this you know, after this next season. He'll be, he'll be eligible. He's on his way to the NFL. I can't imagine a better stamp to put on your resume than to have a great season in the Big Ten and a good defense where you're the, where the marquee piece up front and being coached by Coach Henderson, who, again, will be able to give you that stamp of approval that now you've had one year of NFL line, you know, lineman uh, development underneath a NFL line coach. So, I'm again, I, I'm not speculating why he's leaving or, or what the reasoning is. But there's a lot of reasons for him not to leave. And there would be a lot of reasons for him maybe to, to stay. But if he did leave, and this is one more thing I had a conversation with Gabe today from Trojan Blade. If he does leave, remember, the, the portal giveth and the portal taketh away, right? So we, we, we've lost a, a big piece if he does leave to some other team. But that opens up a slot for a starting position on a defensive line with Coach Henney recruiting a bunch of guys across the country. And we know we needed depth. May, might be easier to pull in a couple of guys now that there's an open spot available than it would have been if you had a starting, you know, th there were very few positions on that the defense that there were that were inked in. That was one that definitely was inked in. And now it's gonna possibly be open. So I don't know what you guys thoughts are on those things. Well, you know, it, 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 to, to me, it, with Bear Alexander, I, this is what we need to keep in mind. And, and obviously, so if it, this is a fluid situation right now. So the idea that he's gone, not it, not uh, not official, like there there's a lot that's unconfirmed about all of this. And I'm, I'm seeing the chat, you know, guys saying that, you know, USC could be pulling him back in the right direction uh, to retain him. But just let's just play along with the hypothetical for a moment. All right. Not this. I'm not saying like this is that does not imply that there's any kind of finality here because there isn't. But let's, let's just just play along with the hypothetical that he does choose to leave. Let's remember how he came here. <laughs> he left Kirby Smart <laughs> to go play for Alex Grinch. <laughs> now that now that is not a normal decision. That is not a decision most people would make. And so you, you, if uh, the guy who left Kirby Smart to play for Alex Grinch would also leave Eric Henderson and Danton Lynn to go play somewhere else. So like that, that's the only thing that makes sense is how illogical each of these two transfer portal movements by Bear Alexander would be. And one of the talking points that circulated is that like he, he is Mark, Mark, you know, this 
Bear Alexander is to the portal. If he if he goes, if he goes, uh, or even if he doesn't go, but like over the past several years, he would be the college football equivalent of Larry Brown as a basketball coach, the ultimate nomad. Like he just can't stay anywhere very long because Bear Alexander hopped from one high high school to another. Now he's hopping colleges like nobody's business. Again, if if he does leave, that just reinforces how he just likes to be a nomad. And he, he and, you know, if you take him to a Chinese restaurant, what would Bear Alexander order? He'd order the poo poo platter. Just just give me a little of, of everything. Like I don't want one thing. I need to sample everything in the room. That, you know, that's Hawaiian food. Something, what in terms of what makes people tick? I mean, Bear Alexander seems to love variety. Like that, like that's his thing. So if if he does leave USC, like that would just affirm that he just wants to sample a little bit of everything in life. And well, so he's wired differently from the rest of us in that regard. So I, I want to jump in there again. It, we can't conflate what was going on with him in high school. We, you got, we also have to remember, if you know a little bit of his history, uh, I, I don't want to go into his past. But, you know, it's, it's, he did not have a typical, you know, I was blessed with a situation in my house where I had a lot of guidance from a very young age and, and had a, a lot you know, of help. Uh, you know, he, Bear, from my understanding, I do not know Bear. I do not know his family situation intimately, but there have been people talking about it. And a lot of people influencing Bear and his ideas, and uh, there, there's that in, there's that instance of it. The second part is is that uh, he left Georgia not just to leave Kirby Smart to go to to Alex Grinch. He left for playing time. I mean, he 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 was frustrated. Uh, there were rumors and speculation that he was promised things that he did not get uh, at Georgia, and he said, "You know what? He went into spring. Remember, he was a spring transfer as well for them. He gave it a go. He played there." He got some moments of playing time. They want him there. He was coming into spring and something about in the spring and what they shared with him and, and promised him uh, again, all speculation as well. Uh, so I, I, I get the narrative that you're doing, Matt. I'm not sure if it's with the limited information that we do have. I'm not sure if that's the fair thing to do to a young man who is back, you know, who was going through um, uh, uncharted water in his life. And I, I hope he's getting the best advice possible uh, I do agree, though, leaving Kirby Smart is a, a brilliant point you're making that you know, you're in a great situation for the coaching part of it. But did it work for his career? Did they follow through on the promises they made for him? These are things we will really never know why he left Georgia. He's here. Something clearly is going on here. Again, we could speculate. But in reality, I think until more information comes out, I don't think it'd be prudent for any of us to guess any one of a dozen ways why this is happening. Uh, and yes, no, it doesn't make a lot of sense. With the current defensive uh, coaches in place, as well as with uh, what's going on uh, with with coaching for for Coach Henny, these things definitely uh, are are important. But um, you, you know, to to make these guesses or assumptions right now, I'm I'm just really truly not even close to comfortable saying why he's leaving or that or, or the Larry Brown comparison because um, I don't know. It's it's just it's we're, we're comparing a we're comparing a grown adult who's making decisions professionally to a young man who's just trying to navigate young life. You know, I, I've worked with young people and I'm just telling you young people that, that, you know, especially if they're left on their own devices are going to do what they feel is best. But we all know, I don't know about you guys, but when I was 18, 19, 20 years old, I was not making the greatest long-term decisions at that time. I was very, um, and I'm not speaking to, to anybody. I don't, I've never talked to Barry Alexander. I'm just saying I'm generalizing. So I would think that before we start going, I get, I get, I do get the analogy, um, but we're talking about a grown man compared to a young man just trying to navigate life. Forty-eight tackles along the defensive front is a significant number. He batted down four passes, six and a half tackles for loss, and one and a half sacks. So uh, I'll start with you, Tim. Did Bear Alexander deliver the type of season that you anticipated and hoped for? Yes. He was one shining mo uh, moment on a a complete CF. Can I, I can't say that. I can't say that. Just a co complete mess of a defense that we, that was going on at USC last year. He is a guy that always drew that double team, uh, triple team. Sometimes there was a goal line play. It was my favorite plays of the whole year, where literally he took on four dudes. Sadly, the guy walked into the end zone because the linebacker was out of position. But that's the kind of that's the kind of impact that Barry Alexander can have. Uh, I was really 
looking forward to him and Isaiah Rakes just locking down that middle of the defensive line, uh, getting better and better every day under Coach Henney. That would have been uh, – that can still be something amazing. Uh, but uh, to say that he wasn't the one big shining thing on that defense that was really a shiny star, he he absolutely was. And anyone downplaying the loss of Bear Alexander at USC, if, if he were to leave, would be absolute sour grapes. And, and I was thoroughly impressed with Bear Alexander. I, I remember the Utah game, you know, the, when USC, you know, was struggling uh, midway through the second half and, and trying to rally. And it was Bear Alexander who was making high impact plays. He was firing up the team. Uh, you know, he really was a guy who was kind of pushing uphill, uh, trying to will that defense home. Obviously, couldn't couldn't finish the job. But Bear Alexander was the guy who was really making plays in that game and like just in terms of being a, a force and a presence uh, throughout the season, like Bear Alexander was a guy who continuously showed up. One of the commenters in the chat mentioned, you know, remember when he in the cow game, when he sat out the first half, he comes in the second half, USC's, uh, you know, was able to pick it up and was able to, you know, rally and win that game. Um, so like Bear Alexander, it's kind of like Caleb Williams on defense, you know, like he he was left to do a whole lot himself. Kind of a comparison to uh, Tuli Tui Pelotu from 2022. You know, Tuli Tui Pelotu in 2022, it was him on the defensive line and not a whole lot else. Bear Alexander, though playing a different position with a, obviously a very, very different style of play. You know, it was Bear Alexander and he was not getting a whole lot of help on his defensive line and on the defense as a whole. So, you know, just imagine Bear Alexander with other elite defensive tackles, ends, and being on a on a thoroughly uh, good, balanced defense at every level, every position group with elite coaching. You would see him, you know, be so much better because defense, I mean, offenses couldn't just key on him trying to take him out of the play. They'd have to account for other really good pass rushers, other really good uh, defensive linemen, other really good uh, defensive players within the overall scheme. So the, so if you look at the stat sheet, that doesn't begin to do justice uh, to how well Bear Alexander performed because he was on an island. He was isolated in terms of uh, how good he was relative to his other teammates. What he did without getting a whole lot of help, the numbers don't remotely began to tell the story of his quality last season. And just playing, I mean, it's just in general, playing in that middle of the defensive line, doing your job correctly, we all know, you don't get those glory stats, but what you do, what you do absolutely impacts the game. You help the other guys to get those sacks. You're the one that collapses that pocket. You're the one that moves that quarterback right into the defense's of end's arms. So, um, you're the one that takes that double team to free up the linebacker to make the tackle at the line. These are the things that Barrett Alexander excels at. This, these are the things that if he does stay at USC, will be counted on next year, and that if he does leave, they'll be missed by Trojans. And, and one thing to, to jump in here with, one of the things that Mark Rogers is really good at noting on a consistent basis, and you know, particularly with USC, I remember when Bryson Shaw came over from Ohio State, one of the first things Mark mentioned was, the fact that he has all those tackles, that's not necessarily a good thing, you know, because that means that the linebackers aren't uh, cleaning up, you know, like, so having tackles or having certain defensive stats can be highly misleading in terms of the value to a team, in terms of what's happening on a defense, in terms of what's happening on, on a play. So like for, for a guy who plays Barry Alexander's position, having a huge amount of tackles it's not all that representative of how good you are because if you're soaking up a double team and you have good teammates elsewhere along the line, like those guys are going to then going to clean up because you soaked up two bodies. It's someone else's job to come in uh, and make the tackle. So like that is a, a big piece of the context in terms of when we look at Bear Alexander's statistical uh, output versus his actual production and value within the USC defense. What is apparently not misleading is 247 Sports' ranking of Bear Alexander, because I certainly knew he had it, at least a good season. I just wanted to hear it from the two experts. 
how good a season he had, but they are currently ranking him as the number one player expected to be in the transfer portal out of the guys that have obviously declared at this point, which is pretty limited, but still they've got him on top. I agree. I mean, that's a good evaluation. Yeah, not that's that's not um that's not unexpected. I, I again he's he is special and uh, a lot of I did hear people saying usually a lot of actually I will give credit not not in the Trojan family but outside we're saying downplaying his impact on the defense last year and again you just really have to watch the game to see just the impact that, that he made. And of course, Bear Alexander from Texas. So there's much speculation as to where he may wind up. I'm, I'm sure USC does not want to see him in week one. But, but painful, Tim, you also painful made a comment. To contemplate. <laughs> Tim, you also made a comment just to keep us all in the right headspace here. It's obviously not official. And there are some points of speculation out there about this maybe jumping the gun or that he may have other considerations or be having other conversations that they, of course, USC will have the opportunity to try to change his mind again, if that's in fact what's happening here. Well, I mean, I, I will just say that, um, so Gabe from Trojan's Blades in the in the chat, and I've been reading, there's, there's sort of news and stuff going on just same speculation was going on hours before it broke. You know, we were hearing about, um, we heard about the news that he might be going and then, and then it came out, uh, USCJ broke the news. Don't let anyone nationally tell you otherwise. It was USCJ that, uh, put it out there on Twitter that he was, um, that there's, well, that there's a strong chance that he's going to enter the portal. Um, one, I, I, I would, one we talked about earlier, coach Henderson, coach Henny, he, he talked about right away how the you know losing his mom at a young age and, and and just the struggles he's had and how he really works. How does he do his recruiting? He does his recruiting because he's a relationship guy. Like he really cares about the, he talks to these kids. You know, he he talks to them in the language that they're gonna understand. And I think maybe he might resonate with Bear. And and I think that uh the the issue, if it's an issue where like someone will say speculating again, speculation that there's some family issues. Uh, I, I don't know. I have no information on that. Uh, he is from Texas. The the all the rumors are that he's going to be. If he does surface, it will be somewhere in Texas. Those are the the, the schools, right? Uh, Texas A and M, UT, uh, SMU. I've I've heard some things like that, just in that general area. But I I wouldn't rule him out because these day this day and age, you're not just recruiting kids in high school. You're not just recruiting kids from other schools. You're recruiting your own roster every single year now. In, in college football. And we've seen what Coach Henny can do with kids that barely know him that are recruits. I'm sure in the short amount of time that Bear was here. And if you guys, if anyone's seen Bear on social media, I used to go to the basketball games. I saw Bear at a lot of basketball games. It's not like Bear was sitting, you know, just aloof somewhere, NIL, not soaking in the USC experience. You know, the, he, he genuinely seemed in social media and, and out on events to really enjoy the USC experience. Um, you know, at the end of the day, this it's a young man, and I, I hope every Trojan, and this is I miss from the bottom of my heart. If he needs to go somewhere else, then that you should all pray for him and hope he has he gets what he needs in his life. Cause this, you know, this is also the kid that broke down and blamed himself for one play in a game, you know, that that didn't go the right way in that Utah game. When in reality, there's a there's you know a hundred plays that could have gone differently, but he took that to heart, just breaking down emotionally, you know. So I, I I feel that if this is the, if USC is the right place for Bear, uh, Coach Henderson, he and and Riley are going to sit down. They're going to talk about it, and if it is uh, somewhere where he can flourish, I believe he'll be back at USC. If not, I'm going to wish him the best of luck because why couldn't you? Why, why couldn't you root for a kid trying to get his dreams? In future weeks, of course, here at the Voice of College Football, if this news does turn out to be. As reported, we will lean on these two to kind of rework the USC defensive line and see how the pieces may fall and who needs to step up. But that's probably a conversation for a later date, uh, just to see if this actually does come through and plenty of uh, time to analyze the defensive front.